Thank you, Tom. It is great to be with you. You know, in the fall of 2012, I, I had the privilege of speaking at the Republican National Convention. And I talked about our national debt. I talked about our two little girls, Caroline and Catherine. And that night, my wife Heidi and I, we went back to the hotel room. It was about 1.30 in the morning. And we, I pulled out my iPhone, began looking at Twitter. And it so happened that, that Paula Poundstone, the comedian, uh, was watching the convention that evening. I, I guess she had nothing better to do. And, and she sent a tweet. She said, Ted Cruz just said, when his daughter was born, the national debt was $10 trillion. Now it's $16 trillion. What the heck did she do? <laughs> Heidi and I laughed so hard we almost fell out of bed. But you know, our daughter Caroline is six. In her short life, the national debt has grown from $10 trillion to now nearly $18 trillion, larger than our national debt. Let me tell you something, what we're doing is fundamentally immoral. If we keep going down this path, our kids, our grandkids, they're not going to be able to work to meet the priorities of the future. They're not going to be able to work to meet their needs, their desires. They're going to spend their entire lives working to pay off the debts of their deadbeat parents and grandparents. That's what this fight is about. Citizens Against Government Waste does a great job of highlighting the waste and the culture of corruption that is rampant in Washington. And sadly, it's a bipartisan affair. Just a few weeks ago, we had a Senate Armed Services Committee hearing where Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel was testifying. And I, and I took the opportunity to ask him about the algae fuel program in the U.S. Navy. We spent roughly $160 million on algae fuel. Now, mind you, the same conventional fuel would have cost about $40 million. That's $120 million just absolutely wasted. And it was striking to see the Secretary of Defense refer to the algae fuel as a, quote, luxury. And yet, the Department of Defense continues to maintain those luxuries have to be maintained at the same time they're proposing dramatically reducing the size of our military forces, reducing our soldiers and sailors and airmen and marines. What a backward set of priorities. Now, as Tom rightly noted, there are voices in Washington saying, we need to get back to earmarks because it greases the process. It makes it easier to cut a deal. And you want to cut a bipartisan deal in, in Washington, it's very easy. You say, well, we'll spend for your project, your project, your project, your project, another trillion dollars, we're done. And that's how you go from 10 trillion to 11 trillion to 12 trillion to 18 trillion. That's how you bankrupt this country. That's what this is about. You know, I commend my colleagues, especially John McCain and Tom Coburn, for being relentless scourges against earmarks against waste, I agree that the, the earmarks are the gateway drug to the culture of corruption and spending in Washington that is selling our future down the river. The day I announced for Senate, I pledge never to take an earmark. And I just want to say thank you to the good folks at Citizens Against Government Waste for highlighting this problem, highlighting what we're fighting for. And I've never done a press conference standing next to a six-foot pig. <laughs>